By this point, Borderlands 3 has been out for quite a while, and while the general consensus seems to be that the gameplay itself is fantastic, the story and writing seems to be a disappointingly low point of the game. Regardless of what you think of the story itself, it seems that an almost unanimous consensus that Ava is one of the worst main characters in the franchise. A big question is, why? Well, there are many reasons for that, and in this video I'll not only be discussing exactly what makes Ava such a hated character, but I'll be using another correctly done and pretty well-loved character as a comparison, Tiny Tina. Character comparisons can be a very subjective topic. This means while one person may like a certain character, another may not. In this comparison, I will be attempting to look at each teen with unbiased eyes, analyzing them from a writing perspective, although I'm no professional writer. Additionally, I will be delving into many major plot points of three due to Ava's direct connection with them. While I won't be specifically analyzing the story, I will be bringing up some parts that might not be directly related to Ava's character. The last important thing to note is that I will be using Tina's appearance only in two for the comparison. This is due to Borderlands 3 Tina not filling in the artificial need for a young character within their respective stories. Tina's unfortunately underwhelming use and appearance in 3 will not be brought up since it's not relevant to this comparison. Now, if it wasn't obvious by the title of the video, Ava simply doesn't work as well as a character. That's the short and simple of it, but I'm making a video, so that means we'll be getting into the nitty gritty details as to why she doesn't, but why Tiny Tina did in Borderlands 2. I'll be focusing on four main points for each of their character. Characterization, how their backstories are handled, their response towards loss, and their importance within the story. To start, let's discuss the basic characterization of both Tina and Ava. If we needed to boil both of these characters down into single sentences, then it would go something like this. Tina is a 13-year-old explosive prodigy with a quirky, crazy personality who's been orphaned. Ava is a rebellious teenage girl that's an apprentice to Maya who has also been orphaned. Characterization is a very subjective aspect of this comparison, and ultimately hard to try and logically explain. While it would be simple to say that Tina's quirkiness automatically makes her better, quirkiness isn't necessarily seen as a good character trait, and Tina is very quirky. There have been many characters that can be labeled as simply having the quirkiness be their only personality, and it just doesn't make for a good character, and while a big part of Tina's character is her craziness, it isn't the only defining trait of her. Tina does have depth in her personality, and that is best seen in Assault on Dragon Keep, and as well as Commander Lilith's DLC. Tina is ultimately shown as a character who actually does have feelings and insecurities within these DLCs, which helps round out her character and makes her relatable. It also shows that part of the reason she may act the way she does, aside from actually being mentally damaged from her life experiences and likely explosive experimenting, is that it might be her emotional defenses. It might be the wall she puts up so that people don't actually see how she's really feeling. Once again, this is best seen in Assault on Dragon Keep, which I'm going to be going into later on in the video. On the other hand, we have Ava. Currently, unlike Tina, she hasn't gotten the luxury of DLCs to expand her character, but you can argue that considering how much of a mainstay she has within the main series and main story, character expansion via DLC shouldn't even be necessary to develop her character. Ava is introduced relatively early on in Borderlands 3, and from the get-go we see she's eager and impatient to become a vault hunter. Her entire personality is the stereotype of a hot-headed rebellious teenager that likes to disobey adults. Many would agree this is a very tiring and irritating character type, but like any kind, it could be done properly. The problem is, Ava is not one of those characters. She stays the same throughout the whole story, constantly arguing with other characters, disobeying orders that are meant to keep her and ultimately others safe, and being one of the most annoying characters in the entire series. At least in terms of prominent characters. Now, her behavior could easily be explained through a well-written backstory, right? A relatively important aspect of characters are their backstory if they are given one. A character's backstory can explain why they are like they are, or they can be used to give the player some sympathy towards them. Both Ava and Tina have backstories told within their respective games, one as a specific side quest and one as echo logs in an area. While both are meant to give depth to their characters and make the player sympathetic to their situation, there's one major thing that separates one from working and the other not. Presentation! 
Nikita's works because of two factors. Her backstory is presented in a live recording format. You hear her parents being experimented on and eventually killed. The player gets to experience the moment Tina loses her parents, while only a younger Tina is hurt. Sweetheart! Remember that heavy rush on? I told you to hide your dress! Pull the pin at the top, then throw it at the wall! Mommy? Just run! Tina! Run! Tina herself isn't around for you to hear the recordings and thus doesn't react to them. Her absence gives players a chance to formulate their own feelings around her past without any forced character influence. On the other hand, Ava's backstory is presented through an entire side quest in which she tasks you to retrieve her diary that got left on Athenus. Already, the problem is that Ava is there throughout the whole thing with her attempted tough girl persona. <laughs> That's not about me. That's just a, a song of writing. It's about politics. Yeah, they're bad. Right? Forget that. Just find this guy before he finds my secrets! The difference here between Ava and Tina's backstory is that we don't get to read or listen to it ourselves. Now, this may not have been much of a problem if Ava herself had opened up and told us of her past, but instead, a Malawan soldier reads it as the most humorless, mocking tone he possibly could, while Ava tries way too hard to brush off the diary entries as creative writing and normal teenage girl things. <laughs> okay. That was a poem? The sewer's an allegory for boys. Yeah, normal poem stuff. Not real, just a made-up poem. Ugh, seriously, find this guy! An example within the series of a character discussing their own backstory in a way that works is Pickle. Regardless of what you may think of Pickle and his personality within the main story of the pre-sequel, Within the Claptastic Voyage, there are echo recordings made by himself that explain the reason why he was so keen on raiding the Drakensberg, which was actually to find his parents' ashes, instead of simply stealing the tech within the fallen ship that he seemed to say he was doing. The way this is delivered actually effectively makes the player sympathetic of his loss and understand that he had an ulterior motive that he didn't initially tell the Vault Hunters, one that wasn't of malicious intent. And since Pickle is a relatively disliked character, it shows that there are ways to improve upon and create depth for hated characters, something Ava could have really benefited from. The problem with Ava's backstory, however, is that it's presented in a comedic light with the way the entries were read and her own immature reactions to it. Her backstory is supposed to make the player feel sympathetic towards her and explain why she acts as rebellious and tough as she does. But with the way the game handles it, Ava is only shown as more immature due to her resistance to admitting this was what she lived through, simply denying constantly. Her immaturity is a big part of her character, and that could have been developed throughout the game, but it wasn't, and that's something I'll touch on more later. Lackluster character aside, another huge problem with why Ava didn't work is her significance to the plot and how much she affected it, despite the fact that she shouldn't have. Unlike Ava, Tina's role in Borderlands 2 was fairly short in the grand scheme of things, but ultimately necessary. She had a particular set of skills that allowed the Vault Hunters to intercept the train they believed had the Vault Key on it. Tina was specifically needed for the plot, and once she plays her part, the story moves on. Tina wasn't this overly crucial character that lingered throughout the entire story. She didn't overstay her welcome, instead she contributed her role and let the story move on. While Tina did stick around with some side missions and revisiting her upon Roland's death, players weren't oversaturated her explosive personality, something that could have easily made a character as quirky as her much more hated. Simply put, Ava's faux necessity within the story of Borderlands 3 is nothing short of infuriating. When actually looking at the story, she basically boils down to a plot device and not even a good one. She is likely the reason Maya was forced to die, and Troy gains her powers. And she is the one that saves Lilith and Tannis from the rubble of the Fallen Vault Arch after receiving Maya's powers. In fact, the reason she's even a large part of the third act is because she becomes a siren, and sirens are especially important in 3's story. In tandem with Ava's lack of character growth, Ava receiving Maya's powers were not deserved or earned within the required character progression or really the story overall. Ava simply receives it when Troy is defeated after having spent the whole game complaining and blaming other people for Maya's death. She had no character growth at all. 
Additionally, despite her lack of training and experience with Siren powers, she magically is able to have complete control over them and is able to use them to save Tannis and Lilith immediately after. Upon actually analyzing the story, it seems that Ava could have been completely left out, or at the very least not had nearly as big a role as she had. Maya easily could have taken her place, but the writers seemed to think that they needed a repeat of what they did in 2 and kill off one of the Vault Hunters from the previous games, not counting pre-sequel which seems to have been completely ignored within 3's story. Man, they did my girl Aurelia dirty. The extensive new lore we receive about Sirens, specifically how their powers can be passed on to a specific person upon death, could have easily been explained by Tannis having received angels and, in fact, is explained that way within the game. Even though we never see Tannis receiving Angel's powers, it's understood what happened. We didn't need to physically see the event occur, but Ava's existence showed us that just to drive in the fact that Sirens can choose their successor. Another thing that solidifies Ava's ridiculous inclusion into the story, and really just a nonsensical decision, is that before Lilith flies off to save Pandora and Elpis, she specifically leaves Ava in control of Sanctuary 3. A young, teenage girl who's been shown to be impulsive and immature is left as the commander of the Crimson Raiders. Now if that doesn't scream Mary Sue and self-insert, then I don't know what does. Instead of leaving it to a young girl who just became a siren, Lilith should have given control to basically anyone else. While Tannis would likely deny the position, there was still the option of Ellie, or really absolutely anybody else. Hell, I would have taken a Claptrap as an option, or even Tina herself. The last major point I want to make as to why Tina's character worked but Ava didn't is how they individually dealt with loss. Each character lost someone that was very important to them, and they each responded to it in wildly different ways. With Tina, the loss of Roland hit her hard. In the side quest Bearer of Bad News, the player is tasked with notifying other characters of Roland's death personally. Tina is one of these characters, and instead of acting like her wacky self, she properly shows that she's devastated and requests to be left alone with the news, locking herself in her garage. This small bit also added to her character, showing that she wasn't just a psychotic explosives expert. To add to how Tina dealt with grief, we were given arguably the best DLC in the series, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, which delved into a fantasy world created to deal with her grief towards losing Roland. This campaign rounded out her character. She went from a quirky and crazy girl to a normal person with feelings that still showed her age, with what was essentially a coping mechanism that added to her immaturity in accepting the death. Tina uses a campaign of bunkers and badasses to try and deny the fact Roland is gone. The result of the campaign ends with her finally accepting that Roland is dead, and breaking down at that acceptance. It's a heartbreaking moment, but it's an understandable and relatable one. Throughout the campaign, Tina isn't really being immature with the whole ordeal, just denying the truth, which is indeed one of the five stages of grief. As with the other characters try and get her to accept reality, none of them are really harsh towards her until the very end where Tina finally admits she knows Roland is gone. After that, the Vault Hunters are supportive of her, instead of dismissive. They know this game is her way of working through the grief, and they encourage her to finish the story. And of course, on the other hand, we have Ava. With Ava, she lost her mentor, Maya, but her personality and constant denial of her life makes it so that she instead skips straight to being angry at everything, an admittedly fitting response. The problem here is that while it was the most likely response in accordance to her character, it was written and handled extremely poorly. Instead of accepting or even admitting that Maya's death was mostly her fault, or even slightly, she instead blames everyone else, specifically Lilith, even though she was not capable of really preventing the death since she wasn't there and lacked her siren powers. Ava's response to Maya's death is a huge flaw in both her character and the overall writing of the story. While it is technically in character for a bratty teenage girl who doesn't listen to orders, it causes her to be even more unlikable to the player as she goes around screaming that it's everyone else's fault but refuses to take responsibility for her actions. This is where a glaring problem with the handling of her character and the writing become apparent. Throughout her outburst and anger, not a single character speaks up to object to it. No one speaks out as to what she says, but they instead take it. 
This could have been because they felt it wasn't the time to do it, or it wasn't their job to discipline her. But it arguably was the best time to do so, and could have been used as a moment of character development. Imagine if Ava had been disciplined after Maya's death. What if the characters had called her out on her attitude, and explained that she shouldn't be blaming people for her death? This could have caused her to think about her actions, and actually evolve into a character that didn't constantly disobey orders, and that began reflecting on their actions, eventually making themselves a more mature character. If this had happened, it would have not only helped with her lack of character development, but it also would have made it so that Ava actually worked for where she ended up, instead of just being given this immense power of the sirens. Overall, Ava could have just been a fine character, but due to her being shoehorned into the entire story, receiving no character development, having an unsuccessfully executed backstory, and her response to loss, she simply fell flat as a likable character. On the other hand, Tina worked in Borderlands 2 due to not having been only written better, but for essentially succeeding in what Ava failed to do, despite having completely different roles in their respective stories. Maya deserves better than this.